Hey there, winos. This is Vince.Wine. Okay, I'm super excited today. I'm going to be popping open the cork on The Prisoner. This wine has become such a cult classic, it's gained a whole lot of popularity. And I really want to find out what is the hype all about. Let's pop the cork on today's Wine Lab. Hey, thanks for joining me. And before we get started today, if you want to be a winoceros, hit subscribe on this channel to become a wino today. I put out new videos every single Saturday, so be sure to hit that bell icon to stay notified for more great wine content. So The Prisoner is what you kind of call a top shelf wine. I sort of see it in that $50 price range, $49 price range with some other high-end red wine and red wine blends. You know, and it feels like a high-end wine too. This is a really gorgeous presentation of bottle. You've got a really nice sort of tapered glass here and the bottle is nice and weighty in my hands too. So it does feel like a premium selection. The capsule is black with the little P for Prisoner right on top there, really cool looking. And then of course, Francis Goya's painting of The Prisoner. And really that's probably the most remarkable thing about this wine. I mean, that is super attention grabbing. All right, and on the back there, Napa Valley Red Wine. So this is a big hitter from The Prisoner Wine Company who actually has a selection of labels. Let's take a minute and jump into the website just so that we can see what we're looking at here and then we'll pop the cork. Okay, let's check out what they're all about. Okay, as I look at their shop page here, well, I didn't realize they had so many selections. So today we're gonna do this one, the 2019 Prisoner Red Blend, but they have a Prisoner Cab Sauv, a Zinfandel, uh, a couple other blends here. Oh, this one looks really cool, the Eternally Silenced. I think there was a little bit of controversy surrounding that label, as I recall. That may be a cool one to check out another time. Oh, wow, and they have 100% Charbono. So Charbono is also a varietal that is found in this red blend. Now this is a really complicated um, varietal that I wouldn't blame you if you haven't even heard of. It really exploded in Napa and has since been put into a lot of blends and even found 100%. It's sort of a medium to light bodied red wine with a lot of bright red fruit and kind of higher acidity. Okay let's read a little bit more about our wine today. Yeah really great um, looking website by the way really clean looking super presentable so it says that the blend was inspired by Italian immigrants who originally settled in Napa Valley. It's a Napa blend that has Zinfandel, Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Syrah, Syrah, and Charbonneau. So this is sort of a mutt. I'm really excited to see how much of those individual characteristics starts to play through, either the jamminess from Syrah and Zinfandel, and that sort of heavy tannin from Petit Syrah and Cab Sauv. I expect it to be pretty interesting that way. Okay, winemaker notes, uh, being cherry, dark chocolate, clove, roasted fig, okay, yeah, pomegranate, it, vanilla, <laughs> smooth, luscious finish. Okay, well, we will put that to the test. Okay, and just as far as this beautiful label, um, it is Francis Goya's Prisoner painting, and there is a lot of sort of social justice stuff that the Prisoner Wine Company has to say about that, but we're just gonna keep it about the wine here at Vince.Wine. And if you wanna see more about that, you can check out their story at theprisonerwinecompany.com. Okay, I think that's it for the website. I'm really excited to taste this wine. Let's pop the cork. Okay, today I'll be using cork pops to pop open this bottle. I've just been having a lot of fun with cork pops. Not sponsored, but cork pops if you're out there. And if you want to see my review of cork pops and other wine gadgets, I'll link it right here. Go check that one out. So yeah, in my initial review of the cork pops, one thing I realized was that the only thing it was missing was a cutter. And lo and behold, this version has a cutter with it. So you don't need two devices. I can simply cut the capsule with the same device. That worked perfectly. And you just push down and pop away. That was easy. Ooh, also on this version, it comes with a really cool cork removal situation here. You just twist that off and there you have it. This sort of just has popped out now. Check that out. Isn't that cool? Easy. <laughs> okay, let's check this out. Wow, yeah, that's got a really pretty color on it right away. Sort of blood red color here, really pretty. Oops, got a little cork in there, but that's not a big deal. And one thing that I can notice right away is I've got a lot of aromatics 
ooming off of this glass. I'm really impressed that I can smell it from right here. I haven't even put my nose up to it yet. Okay, and let's just get a look at the color of this wine. You can see it isn't so concentrated that I can't see my hand underneath it. So it's got a medium concentration on there. Again, sort of this ruby red with some violet magenta tones in there. Sort of wants to be like a blood red color, but um, not completely. And as I spin my glass here, you can see that it isn't quite staining the glass but it is leaving um, some pretty significant legs there. You can see these really sort of fast running thick legs on there. So I think there is just a touch of residual sugar. Uh, let me check to see where I was on the alcohol. Holy moly, this is 15.2. So um, yeah, that's still for a cab. That's that's about right. A touch on the high side, but I think because of all of that sort of fruitiness and sort of vanilla from the oakiness and the youthfulness of the wine, the alcohol really doesn't come through. It doesn't make the palate hot or anything like that. It's super approachable. Oh, yeah, that definitely smells like Napa. Ooh, yeah, there's like, okay, so the first thing that's hitting me is I'm getting sort of a leatheriness out of this. Really, really pretty. But underneath that, there's sort of this jammy condition of fruit. And I know I'm sort of jumping all over the place, but I'm getting hit by a number of things at once. I'm getting sort of like a hazelnut. Yeah, kind of hazelnut, kind of caramel. And that does remind me quite a bit of a Napa cap. So a little oak presence in there, a lot of fruit presence and some tertiary flavors in there as well, like that leather. And this is a 2019 vintage, so that is particularly young. And that's probably the reason why I'm getting a jammy consistency of fruit. A cab tends to give you a little bit more of like fresh red fruits, dark black fruits, um, but this is kind of jammy, although the Zinfandel in this wine is definitely gonna lend to that jamminess as well. So that is coming through for sure. Okay, let's take the palette. Okay, that is luscious. Oh my goodness. This is the most velvety, silky, luscious wine. The mouthfeel is the first thing that gets me. It is just round and rich, almost syrupy in texture. It just envelops my palate in a really full way without being too weighty or gripping or overbearing. It's pretty pleasant. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that finish is just going too. Super lengthy finish. I'm really impressed by this mouthfeel. Yeah, about medium alcohol here, not too high. Medium to full body as well. It's not super weighty, but still full and rich. <laughs> and it is going like borderline sweet, okay? So I wanna stay away from that word because certainly it's not a sweet wine. There's a touch of this sort of residual sugar thing in there, but I, I'm kind of reaching for it. It, it. it just plays off to make the wine super approachable. It's not gonna dry you out. Okay, it's easy to see why this has become such a popular wine. This is a people pleaser for sure. Is it a $50 wine? You know, I'd have to say yes. This is a really well-made wine, at least $49, sub 50. Um, but yeah, I can see this in the $48, $49, $50 price range. It's just super well-made, really drinkable. And come on, it looks so cool. This is gonna be super impressive sitting on any tabletop. Okay, what's the final verdict? I like it. Yeah, I'm gonna have a couple glasses of this. Uh, <laughs> this is pretty nice. Because of the price range, this is not like my daily or weekly table wine. Uh, maybe for fancy dinners or, or something interesting on Sunday night. I probably still wouldn't take this out to eat at a restaurant or, or like with a dedicated high-end meal. This would totally be like the star of the show, not the food. All right, well, there you have it, winos. I know that was a pretty quick one, but yeah, this was a really cool excursion into the Prisoner Wine Company. You know, those other labels that they produce seem kind of interesting, so let me know in the comments if you wanna see more reviews on the Prisoner wines. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, please leave me a like, that helps so much. Don't forget to share this video with your wine friends, and until next time, winos, drink safe and drink well. A touch on the high side, but I think be I think I think because I think because of all of those um Yeah you too <laughs>